Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Automation, the car company tycoon game. It's been a little while, but we're headed back to the campaign today to do some work with our fantasy company. And today we're going to do something a little bit crazy. It is 2005, February of 2005. Our company has done quite well for itself, starting from the very beginning of the light campaign, making it all the way to 2005 in an economy that has been constantly eh over the past few decades. We're going to make ourselves the most badass ultimate zoids we can possibly make. That is the goal for today. We have 32 billion dollars in the bank. We have money to blow if this car is extremely expensive to produce and the factories cost astronomical numbers. I'm still going to do it. I want to do it. The Magnet Mark III will soon be coming online. That will be a good cash flow for us, I believe. Uh, we have the Sharky Mark II coming into production right now. It's it's doing pretty well. And uh, by pretty well, yeah, it's barely holding on, really, for the moment. But as the economy improves, hopefully, I think it will come around. But we have no time to waste. I'm not even going to advance any time before we start designing the Zoids Mark II because I have a feeling the engineering time on this thing is going to be extreme. Like we might be talking four years. So uh, we're going to have to design something pretty amazing to compete with the cars that will be coming out in four years. The Zoids has always kind of straddled that market of the somewhat affordable supercar and not the extremely limited production, you know, uh, unobtainium supercar. We're talking, you know, not the, the vectors of the world, not the, even like Pagani Zonda, not even really that kind of category. That kind of stuff, in a, in a company that has a big production like us, doesn't really make a lot of sense. So if we're going to be aiming for that 08, 09 era, we're probably talking about things like the R8, Gallardo, nicer 911, somewhere in that range. So in the bodies of the last 10 years of coupes, we have this guy here, kind of a Ferrari-esque, McLaren-esque body, but it is the obvious choice for us. It is new enough. There is a smaller version that would actually be really fun to make like a uh, uh, supercar style MR2 with. But that's not what we're doing today. Styling-wise, I don't know. Does this body really have that much modification to it? A little bit, but not a ton. And I've, I've used this body before. I've made cars on this body. Pretty much all seem to turn out about the same. In the chassis department, we're going to go for a monocoque chassis, but we're going to do... We're going to do... Debates, debates, debates. AHS Steel has high stiffness, average weight. Glued Aluminum has low weight and very high stiffness, but limited production. Limited production is probably fine for us. We're not going to be talking more than um, a few thousand units a month. Maybe 2,000 units a month, somewhere in that range. So I think Glued Aluminum might be where we go. The AHS Steel is... A good option, it's a good option, but it's not as prestigious and it's not as light. So we're going to go for the glued aluminum. And engine-wise, we have mid-longitudinal or rear-longitudinal. Transverse, uh, for the engines I have in mind, probably wouldn't fit. We'll try... Let's see here. I'm looking at the different things. Drivability is very low on that rear longitudinal, obviously. We'll try the mid longitudinal. Hopefully there's enough room. Uh, push rod. It's cool. It's fancy. But is there really that much to gain? Sportiness very high versus sportiness high. Double wishbones, pretty great. And I think is good enough. I don't, I don't feel like wasting the, the money and engineering time on push rod suspension. That's right. I'm not going to consider the push rods. The panel material, partial aluminum should be good. It's light and we have familiarity with it. Uh, carbon fiber would be amazing, but probably, like I said, I, I don't want an unobtainium car. I want something that's blindingly fast, extremely good on the track, uh, still pretty prestigious, but somewhat affordable. Like something, something a, a good successful person could actually buy 
and not somebody who, you know, robs banks or, you know, countries for money. Not really huge gains there. Yeah, we'll do the partial. Ooh, styling-wise. Let's see. I... I might take a minute on this one. Might take me a bit. Mm, no, that ain't too bad. It's kind of a unique look. And also, I really like silver reflectors and the headlights. Blacked out headlights are never my favorite. Even though I own a car now that has them, I, I still don't really like it. <laughs> I would prefer they were just, uh, uh, they were all just chrome or, you know, reflective inside instead of, instead of black. Yeah, see that? That looks stupid. It looks plasticky and cheap to me. The body color, too. Like, when the C6 Corvette went to these body colored ones, I thought that was the grossest thing. I don't like that at all. I think that's a good mix. It's got the chrome around the bottom, but then the, the projector housing and stuff is in black. I think that's a good option. Yeah, I don't know about this one. It's a grill I've never used before, but it, uh, it looks so smirky. I don't, I, don't, I don't really like it. And it's overall just kind of a, a smirky looking nose, isn't it? Maybe I need to change the body a bit. Yeah, I went ahead and brought that nose back in, sharpened the front. I think I think I'll be happier with that. Let me try some of these other uh some of these grill options that I've already tried. Like, let's see, that one. Without the uh without the nose being so pointed. Yeah, that looks better. With a little flatter on the front. Bring it down a bit. Maybe bring it down. Bring it in and then put some vents over there. Rotate those up. That's better. That's a better mix. I'm happy I did that. Gotta have our badge up there on the hood. Everybody's gotta know. Fantasy doesn't play around. Technically got indicators here in the headlights, but we'll need some side indicators. I think I'd rather put it on the fender here than up there on the uh, the side panel. It's probably not super era correct, but uh, I don't know. I really don't like the the blinkers like up in here. I lied. That looks better. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Uh, it's bad enough when when other people prove me wrong, but when I prove me wrong, it's terrible. <laughs> Got a big slab of body over here that we probably use some kind of scoop on. It's actually a decent amount of cooling already. We're up to 400. We might have to do, might not have to do any crazy vents in the back. Maybe just something a little subtle. Would be nice. One thing I didn't do was put a lip on the front of it. Uh, it might look terrible. Like, it's probably gonna look super tacky. I mean, we might want it for the downforce, but if we really need downforce, I could do an under tray. Let's just see what it looks like. Uh, it's not terrible, but it won't wrap around far enough, I don't think. Yeah, that's about as far as it'll go. Hmm. Nope. We'll do an under tray if we have to. Be great if we had some of these taillights that stood straight out, like if this was. Uh, you know, a lens that stood straight up and, and then curved back to the body, that would be better. But leaning over like that, not so good. Well, that's a pretty modern take on a taillight there. Uh, it's actually almost a little too modern. Makes it really lose the back end a bit. Like, it makes the back end shapes look very strange. I'm never happy with taillights. I'm never happy with a taillight selection, I think. I mean, I need, need just, like, a, triple the amount of taillights to choose from, I think. See, that's probably, like, a super dated look for 2000... Let's say 2009. But I, I like that way more. Mmm. I'll keep working on it. Now, one nice thing somebody's done is they went ahead and made a grill that has exhaust tips in it for pretty much exactly this car's purpose. Like, that's that's what this this grill is for. So you can get tailpipes and you get grill space. Uh, by letting the air out of the back, we're cooling the engine more, so uh, it gives us a, a nice cooling total bonus. And we get taillights out of the deal. Or sorry, not taillights, tailpipes. But square or rounds, 
Mm, I think I'll go with the round or oval ones. I had to try it. Would a lip spoiler work on this big old bubble butt? It actually kind of does. That's pretty. That's pretty slick looking. Makes it look like a like a fighter jet. Like it's real sleek and and sharp. Probably again wrong era of design, but I like it. I'm curious what you guys think of this design. Is it is it wrong for the era? Does it look very good for 2008? Maybe look at some pictures of like a Murcielago or some Ferraris of of that era. Uh, does it does it look right? Ignore the wheels. But uh, whether it's right or not, it's what I like, and I think that's what I'm gonna go with. It looks like a car that should have an extremely high top speed, and I and I do want that to be the case. We're going to. Uh, let's try it in like a yellow. Whoa, wow. That transition from red to yellow freaks out my eyes. Um, it's very bright. <laughs> uh, dark red. Dark blue. I think it's got to be a bright color. Oh, that's kind of a good color right there. In between. It's a little bit of a yellowy orange. And I think it works. I typically have some problems with the color orange, but, uh, it works pretty well for this car, so I'm going to keep it. And we're going to go with all-wheel drive, because we need the launching power, because we're going to do a crazy engine. Now, now, the craziest thing we could do would, of course, be a V12. Load, please. Oh, I need to choose something here. Uh, sure. The problem is, it ain't going to fit. Like, <laughs> it would have to be a 2.6 liter V12, it's really cool, and I'm sure it would sound amazing, but that's not going to produce the power that I want. I want lots of power. Power. And uh, twin turbo V12. I think we can do more and still have something that sounds amazing with a flat plane V8. Something in like the 4 liter territory, somewhere in that range. And we'll try... We want it to be... Fairly square, because we'd love it to rev real high. Okay. Do our cam. I'll do four valves. Do the aluminum silicone. Not silicone. I think it's aluminum silicon, I believe, is that mixture. But anyway, VVL, for sure. Uh, the difference between aluminum and the, and the mixed is uh, a, a weight reduction, but it's just a lot more expensive. But no more engineering time. So that's fine. Crank, it's gonna rev real high, hopefully. So let's go for forged, and we'll do forged H beam. Uh, I beams get you more RPM, so we'll do I beam steel, and then a lightweight forged piston. We really want this thing to rev a whole bunch. I'm gonna go down a little on the compression. We're going to go way up on these cam profiles. Uh, VVT, sure, might as well. And we're going to go down to that compression because we're going to put turbos on it. A turbo 4 liter, twin turbo 4 liter flat plane V8 should be a power hitting uh, phenomenon for us in 2008. I would think. If I can get the turbos to tune correctly. That's... It's a challenge, trust me. Uh, direct injection would be amazing, but the engineering time is, is extremely high. Uh, and I, I, I want to produce this thing like before the campaign is over. So we'll do the best we can with multipoint. We'll do throttle per cylinder to keep it cool. <laughs> and uh, performance intake. Oh, I was going to say, the race probably looks cooler, but really not that much. Super unleaded is, I think, what we want... Ultimate is so hard to find. Yeah, let's do a super. And I'm aiming for like high 500s, low 600 horsepower, and we should be able to do that on that fuel. I would think. The timing, let's aim for nine grand. Would be nice. And nothing but short cast headers. We'll do 2.75, 600 level horsepower should do it. My flow cat, straight through exhaust. No secondary muffler. Eh, we'll, 
we'll skip the the bypass. Just one straight through muffler. How are we doing? What are we looking like? 528-370, but it's got a knock issue. Obviously, the turbos are going to need some tweaking. Uh, we're getting some valve float, so we may need to reduce the head size a bit. Let's see. Turbo, yeah, it needs some work. So, yeah, to come down to 3.6 liters on the engine, that's still a whole additional liter over what we could probably do with the V12. And a liter makes a pretty big difference. Pretty big difference. I'm sure it could rev a lot higher, the V12. Um, but this is this is no slouch as it is. The bottom end, a uh, little bit of an RPM limit issue. Looks like we're starting to come down on that uh, that power curve anyway. Turbo-wise, kind of a big turbo that comes on pretty late. We're talking five to six thousand before it's really online paired with that the variable valve timing it's not going to be a super easy car to drive down low no power and then huge power up top hopefully the gearbox will be able to deal with that uh, 46 reliability it's not amazing <laughs> it's not a great score hopefully i can figure out how to get that a little bit better yeah, we're not losing any power by reducing the RPM limit, and we got the reliability up to 50, which I think is a respectable number for an engine like this. Uh, Power-wise, <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow, <laughs> that is a lot more than I thought it was. I guess I hadn't really looked at the chart. Uh, 672, and we're having a muffler restriction, or an exhaust restriction. What's it at now? Uh, I clicked off the game. What's it at now? Uh... 683. Wowzers. All right, that's the right size. But wowzers. <laughs> that's a lot of power. What does a lot of power sound like? And boost. Nope, not yet. There it is. goes for so long like it took forever to find boost but then like it seemed like it was on it forever <laughs> that's pretty cool sounding i don't mind that one little bit i i enjoyed that that audio experience <laughs> uh okay i think that's good uh what do we call this engine the flat plane twin turbo and the variant is, this is the only variant it will ever have. So we're just going to call it the Magic Boostage. <laughs> because I can. Alright, time to build a car. Huh? Um, this might be somewhat controversial. Because I said I was making our ultimate supercar. It's the last one we're ever going to make as a company. I'm pretty sure... Um, and I'm not going to choose a sequential. It would be the ultimate supercar choice. It would be the fastest possible. The double clutch, however, is not something that we could afford to do time-wise. And the single clutch, uh, single clutch sequential transmissions, they suck. I would much rather have a manual <laughs> than a single clutch sequential. So that's what we're going to do. Let's see, for a diff, we'll do a geared. Uh, we'll put a little bit of power to the rear. Maybe like a 40-60. Sounds good. 295s. I think there's even more in it. Nope, that was it. <laughs> that was the limit. Vented discs. Yeah, three pistons. All you can take. Vented. Uh, two pistons. All you can take. I'm sure I'll have to adjust these. Fully clad, like I said, downforce wise, we'll have to see. I'm gonna take that wing off the back just because I don't want it to be messing with stuff. We need more cooling. What happened? I knew we, I know we had over 500. What happened to it though? Uh, well, I'll make these larger, I suppose. Oh, that number is floating around. Um, uh, maybe that's a little broken then. 
Okay. Well, let's try it now. Oh, I went too far. No, we're good. Uh, it's up to four ninety nine. We need a bunch more. Oh man, now it's gone crazy. <laughs> Alrighty then. Uh, enough there. Okay, and we probably want a little bit to the brakes actually. We'll see. Two seats, sporty interior, up the quality, uh, premium sat nav, all of the things. Standard safety, because pff, who cares about safety? <laughs> who needs safety when you're doing 200 miles an hour? <laughs> Nobody. Um, let's see. Active sport. Uh, extremely high. I'm trying to stay away from the extremely high stuff, engineering-wise. I think standard springs are probably fine. Yeah. But we'll do adaptive dampers. And we'll do semi-active sway bars. Those numbers look good. Those numbers look very good. And we have tuning to do for sure, especially suspension-wise here. Camber, we need a lot of it in the rear to get this thing to stop over. Oh, actually, not that bad. <laughs> not that bad at all. 0 0.96, 0 0.92. Pretty good numbers so far, actually. Uh, we need some dampers to smooth the ride out. It's pretty rough riding at the moment. Man, why is the front so shaky? Is it over dampened? I don't think so. It might just be like chassis rigidity causing that or something. I'm not sure. Uh, let's go back to gearing. This looks like we're pretty good there. Maybe a bit too much overdrive. And then spacing-wise... Let's see. Ooh, 3.5 seconds, 0 to 60. That's pretty good. That's actually insanely good and probably much too fast. Top speed of 216. That's also really, really, really fast. <laughs> uh, brakes wise, front brakes are good. Rear brakes are way, way over the top. Yeah, we can go down to one pistons there. Actually, we could probably do two pistons in the front. Eh. Eh. There's no brake fade, and it's less weight, and it doesn't change the braking distance. So yeah, no brainer. Do it. Okay, that's all of those done. Can we afford any more cooling off of the thing? 64, 64, 63. Okay, so that's where we needed to be. Uh, I think we gained a mile per hour top speed, which is very important. <laughs> very, very important. Um, doing no arrow because it's actually handling quite well with no wings or anything. Active arrow. Oh, that's something that would be very cool in the game. Interior wise, I guess the only thing to really consider is the luxury sat nav. Uh, yeah, it's it's that pride thing. They want it because it's it's gonna make it. Uh, Make it more prestigious, at least for hyper. Maybe not so much for sport. Luxury, no, they want the sport interior. Uh, advanced safety. Unfortunately, they actually do want the advanced safety, but it makes it heavier. <laughs> it's already 3,600 pounds. Um... But those are those are pretty dramatic score increases, aren't they? Know what? No, I'm saying I want to go fast. <laughs> I'm going for the buyer who wants the fast car, not the safe car. <laughs> so we're gonna keep it where it is, despite having lower scores. If more people can afford it, then they'll appreciate the lower scores. What? That didn't make any sense. Don't listen to me. <laughs> uh, no, that's not where I want to be. I want to see the numbers on this thing. So there's our scores. Uh, here's the detailed stats if, if you want to see those. Very interesting. What's our sportiness drawback? Driver assists. Odd. Uh, gear ratio is a little bit. Engine sound. What are you, nuts? Uh, chassis stiffness. I guess because it's glued aluminum and not carbon fiber. 
Uh, understeer, oversteer, negative 4%. Must be because of the understeer on it. Mid-engine car is probably always going to have a little bit of that. Running cost $5,392. <laughs> Possibly the fuel cost causing some of that. You know, maybe a little. But what we all want to see is the test track. 217 miles per hour top speed. 3.5 seconds, 0 to 60. 11.3 quarter mile. That's blazingly fast. Uh, no downforce. Who needs it? We'll do a run on the airfield track. Uh, I'll let it play through. Let me hear what it sounds like first. <laughs> So, what did they say about the sound? <laughs> like the engine sound wasn't good enough? I kindly disagree. And also, this thing going around the track is a little bit like the early Cohen say gig 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 gigs. In that uh, it's blindingly quick, but not that amazing in the turns. I mean, 1.13, 1.14 on the skid pads, okay. But uh, downforce could really do this thing some favors around the track. But I want this number. That's the number the people are going to want, the buyers. And it just looks good. Uh, Market-wise, Hyper Sport Track Premium. Well, that sounds right. <laughs> sounds right on the money to me. Ooh, ow, ow, my side. Four years, ten months of engineering time on the body. Uh, max funding. And we can get it down to four years three months I think if there was one thing I would do differently in a future playthrough it would be to have engineers I really don't understand why not having them it seems to be the norm it seems like that would be more more the norm <laughs> to try and reduce these engineering times and such uh, because there's there's nobody there but, on the engine side of things, uh, well, it's already at four years, three months, but I'm available for hire, too. So, I can work on the aspiration, the exhaust, the fuel system, and the top end a bit. Um, like, 33? Not yet. Give me, give me some, give me some time. Alright, so we could decrease funding on that. Or, I guess I could increase the reliability. <laughs> I have to. Oop, not that much. There we go. So, this will be taking the Zoids Mark II's factory. Saves us a little money. Uh, we don't need the galvanization anymore. Again, saving a bit of money. I could throw automation at this, but... It's already a huge expense as it is. <laughs> so, uh, let's, let's leave them at 50 for now, and we'll see... Uh, so the factories would be able to max. Good, good. We'll probably... Uh, we'll look at the markup in a minute. 5.51 to 1 at 3 shifts. How much markup could we do? Uh, almost 50%. Like a 45% markup. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Some automation would probably increase this, however. Uh, so, going back and looking at it. Going back, please. Please. There we go. Uh, on this side of things, if we threw that up to, like, 65, it's going to make the initial investment very high. But it should bring down the price of every car. So, I'm just kind of curious uh, what that does to this. Yeah, look at the demand now. Uh, the, the markup can go much higher just because it's costing so much less to produce every car. And that's a good thing. We like that. 55%. Uh, some of them will sell in Fruinia. None to Arcana. You could probably just go ahead and turn that off. Uh, very, very few to Fruinia. You could have the only one in Fruinia. But a uh, pretty good amount in Gazmea. That's not nearly as bad as I expected, to be honest. 
it's not impossible that this thing could actually break even by the end of our campaign. I think it's future-proof enough. Uh, it doesn't go into production until mid-2009, which is a long time away. That is a long time away. But if in five years it can stay relevant enough to eventually break even, that would be pretty amazing. But honestly, none of this mattered. I just wanted to build a car that I thought our company could be proud of, and people would see on the street and think, wow, that fantasy's got their shit together. <laughs> so, uh, despite the fact that it's going to cost us $1.5 billion, and despite the fact that we probably will never break even on it, I'm going to sign off on her. Because it's amazing. Did I not name it? Oh, I didn't name it. Can I still name it? I hope I can still name it, or I'm going to be real sad. I'm going to be real, real sad. Okay. Whew. Whew. I was... I was very scared. Right. Zoids. Mark three. The trim is the uh because I wanna. <laughs> Do I have to sign off on it again? No, it's done. And it named. Okay. Whew. All right. So how's the company doing? Cause I'm gonna go through some years here. I have no immediate cars to uh, replace as of right now. Keeping an eye on the Jaws. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on the Sharky and see if it'll come around a bit. Looks like we need to cut its production quite a bit at the moment. Quite a bit indeed. I'll go down to 1.3. And yeah, let me run through some time here and just see where we're, where we're at, what we're doing. It is the end of 2005 and we made less than a billion dollars that's that's a first in a long time but uh, obviously we're spending a lot of money on engineering uh and just started production on what did we start oh the the magnet mark three so we need to review that uh those are bad signs <laughs> negative 78 million okay uh, okay, pause this. Our reputation and prestige went up. What did the economy do? Very sharp upturn. Which means budget had, well, pretty flat actually. But uh, pretty sharp upturn in the luxury and premium categories is good news for us overall for the things we want to do. Uh, for like Sharky sales and uh, uh, the Bionic sales, which is still selling absolutely freaking amazing. Uh, better than the Truffle. Still, the Jaws Mark II is doing really good, uh, so it's doing a little bit better than the Bionic. The Sharky Mark II, 36 million. It's it's doing okay. It's making money. Uh, it'll probably have a break even. Uh, so let's look at the magnet. What's going on here? What's wrong with you? Markup too high. Okay, we can fix that. We can fix that. That much markup on a budget car is a little ridiculous anyway, so yeah, we'll bring that down, and that should probably fix those issues. Can we make more Jaws? Is that possible? With the economy doing better, I uh, know, but we can just mark them up a bit more. Uh, things like the Jaws, things like the Bionic, those guys are going to sell like King Busteds. Nope, that's the most of those. Uh, no, look at those <laughs> markups already. We'll leave that just like it is. We took care of that one. We didn't look at the Sharky. Uh, but no, it's pretty good. Yeah, let's just continue on. I think I need to just sell the rest of the Sharky originals for scrap because they're probably actually just hurting our reputation at this point, the ones that are selling. Yeah, let's do that as well as the rest of the Magnet Mark II engines. And let's go through 2006. As this year is coming to a close, I can tell you it's going to be a good one. Everything has turned around and has done quite well. Three of our cars we can't even produce enough of. And... And... $2.1 billion. We just paid for the new Zoids pretty much this year. Uh, we're going up in reputation, down in prestige, 
as we're not selling a Zoids right now. That's our big, our big prestige maker. However, the reputation coming up is helping the sales of like the new magnet, which by the way came around and came around very nicely to the tune of 103 million dollars in profit per month. Yeah, came around in a big way. Everything's just doing absolutely amazing right now. Nothing need replacing though. Like I can just kind of keep going here. Let's let's keep going through 2007. Economy, yep, budget did come down a little bit here, so huge upswing. Let's hope that upswing lasts to 2009 so we can sell a bunch of our new Zoids. That would be cool. R&D wise, I put a lot into this and uh, didn't really give it enough time to make it happen. But uh, I think we'll keep what we have. Look at our cars. Probably the Bionic would be the one we replace next. What is the Bionic? I can't honestly remember right now. <laughs> Which is sad. Pony car? Yeah, it was our pony car thing. Super sport. Kind of the, the mid-level uh, sports car. I guess, if you would, the, like, Camaro... Uh, Audi TT, perhaps, kind of level of, of car. Alright, so that would be the next one up to be replaced, and that's a fun one to do. Uh, so maybe we do that in 2008. End of 2007, and 2.7 billion. I was hoping for 3 billion. I really wanted to see it cross over to 3 billion, but 700,000 cars sold. The Magnet Mark III is going insane. Already 527 million, or sorry, million. Yes, that would be that would be insane. But 527,000 of them have been sold. Uh, not quite the 1.6 million Truffle Mark III's that are rolling around. However, Paul, just saying, your Truffle Mark III is now the lowest grossing vehicle in our fleet. But you've done quite well for us over over the course of this company history. All three truffles have done amazing and have helped us get to this point. The uh, Magnet Mark III doing insanely well still. Uh, it's starting to come down off its initial highs due to the fact that the uh, economy has started to dip down in the economy way. Because it's... Wait, what? In the budget way. What am I saying? <laughs> in the budget way. Because it's it's really booming in the normal premium luxury stuff. Okay, uh, another thing worth noting, the Sharky is our first international hit, doing very well in Fruinia and Arcana. So that's cool. That's a cool thing. At least we have something selling to multiple areas. Uh, the Truffle Mark III, I'm only selling that in one region, and I don't entirely know why I did that. However, I can't even make enough to sell in our region, so that might just be fine. <laughs> and with that, I think that's good for today. I think we can move on with our chin up and hoping the Zoids Mark III does amazing. We'll start off next episode making a new sports car to replace the Bionic. And uh, yeah, I hope you're looking forward to that. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will see you next time.